Good evening to one and all. Good evening to one and all. The song I'm going to do is entitled The Goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath and I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You've led me through the fire and darkest night. You're close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. For all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath and I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. For all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath and I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you. 
that believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor anything else of all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live to the Lord, and if you die, we pray to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For from this end, Christ died to the end, and the Lord will come to the end, and the living end. We brought nothing in the world, and we did not have love. The Lord is, and the Lord is. Blessed good afternoon to one and all as we gathered here this evening to give God thanks in life for the life and witness of our brother Derek. Let us all join our voices together now as we sing the hymn through all the changing scenes of life.
We'll have the eulogy done by Raymond Morris, followed by a tribute by Jeffrey Hart. Good evening. A son, a brother, an uncle, a cousin, a father, a dad, a colleague, a friend, a companion, a hardworking man, an honest man, a dedicated man, trustworthy. Those are just some of the words I can use to describe Barry. Affectionately, Direct Livingston Morris, affectionately called Rocky. He was born on the 10th of January 1966 at Fred Villa St. Peter. That's where he grew up. He attended the Enneagram Primary School and then All Saints Boys before moving on to St. Leonard's Boys. While he was growing up, he was like any other young man playing cricket in the road. That's because we don't have a pastor, and he always put himself as a batsman. And then, a near near leg break, spinning. At St. Leonard's, he joined the track team, and was a 100 meter specialist. He also learned ballroom there. A lot of you don't know he could dance. Right. On finishing school, his first permanent job was with the telephone company. Right. He did for a couple of years, but in 1995, he joined the prison service. There was where direct found his love, no pun intended. Right. He, he took off on a career that lasted 28 years up to his passing. He loved his job. He would have to work on Monday morning and on Sundays at 4 p.m. he would be ready. He was never late, never absent, always neat and tidy. Even when at home, he would be interested about what was going on at the prison. He was very dedicated to his job. That dedication will be addressed by one of his colleagues in a minute. Derek loved his family. He never left us out for any reason. Even when he moved to his extended family at Christ Church, with, his, with Simone and Cairo, the other boys, he was always concerned about what was going on at home, especially about mom and the dog. <laughs> he has standing orders for potatoes, bananas, cassava, bear fruit, papa, and those would have to be delivered to him weekly. A couple years ago, there got ill at work, and even though he was ill, Illness was taking the better part of him, but he continued to work. He fought through his illness up to when he could do no more. The memories are so numerous, too numerous to mention now. But in the midst of life, there's death. A very harsh reality. It's difficult for us to accept, but we have to. The, that reality has come home to roost. We will grieve, laugh at the memories, cry if we have to. We will ask why, but God is in control. He has called home one of his children. If I may share, um, on one occasion, he had to go to the hospital. He would always 
let, tell me, don't let the others know they're worried too much. But it was about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, we were at the hospital waiting to be seen. And it was like a hot, shielded my brother. And I had started to nod off, and I heard him say, Lord, have mercy. So I jumped out, I thought something happened. I said, what happened, Rocky, Rocky, what happened? He laughed, he said, not on dish. I just praise it, God. <laughs> we miss you, Rocky. We love you. You will always be in our hearts. Continue to sleep in peace. Continue to be peaceful. Let me just take this opportunity to say thank you to all of you persons who have come here today to share with us. And if you were not here personally, if you have done it in a prayer, in a thought, where you were, where you were, whatever you have done, thank you from my family and me. Thank you. Good evening. Good afternoon. It is always difficult at occasions like these to give those salutations. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Because it's really a sad occasion. But all we can say is that to the family of Derek, we are here to grieve with you. On behalf of the superintendent of prison, management, and staff, we offer sincere and heartfelt condolences to the family of Derek Livingston Morris. I am privileged and honored to deliver this tribute this afternoon. Today we say goodbye to Derek Livingston Morris, father, son, brother, and colleague. Those of us who love him and ache with his passing know Derek by the other name, Rocky, as Raymond just mentioned. I, like so many others, knew him as a course mate and above all, a friend. Derek was the one you could depend on, a champion for those who had none, the epitome of the Barbados Prison Service and the glue which held his colleagues together. A man who stood for fairness, excellence, equality, and justice. Derek Livingston Morris of Franksville St. Peter first joined the Barbados Prison Service at Glendary as it was then located on July 3rd, 1995. On that day, 14 handsome young men embarked on a journey of service to the Barbados Prison Service and by extension, the public of Barbados. I remember the first time I met Derek, the class of 95. Derek, even though only a recruit at that time, looked the part. During training, he was studious, innovative, disciplined, helpful, and possessed a keen eye for detail. He was among a group of 14 all males. Michael, that's Clark. Ofneil, that's Kelman. Rommel, that's Miller. Mark Square, that's Rudder and Scott. Albert, that's Jones. Paul, that's Outram. Dave, that's Bess. Jeffrey, that's Hoyt. Dwayne, that's Austrey. Junior, that's Welch. Roger, that's McIntosh, who is now deceased. And Kenrick, that's Carmichael. This group, come on, don't do this now. Okay, right. This group was a pioneer for recruiting, for recruit training before joining the ranks of the Barbados Business Service. Eight weeks were spent in training 
During that time, Derek took to recruit training, like they say in Barbadian parlance, like a duck to water. From the outset, it was seen that Derek was driven to succeed. He had a vision, and he allowed no circumstance to stand in the way of him accomplishing that vision. After recruiting, Derek blended into the Barbados Prison Service. He brought with him values such as honesty, commitment, and dedication. He possessed a tremendous work ethic and was always willing to go above and beyond the call of duty. Derek was appointed to the prison service on January 1st, 1999, and this was a testament to Derek's determination and exceptional performance in service. Derek served with dignity and with an attitude that can only be described as passionate and purposeful. Nothing seemed to deter him. He just got on with his job. Through hard work and continued personal development, Derek was promoted to the rank of Prison Officer 1 or Sergeant on the 1st of March 2018. As a Prison Officer 1, he acted in a supervisory capacity overseeing the performance of at least 10 other officers below him. Derek served in several departments over the years. Starting at Glendary, he worked in the buildings directly supervising inmates on a day-to-day -day basis. And trust me when I tell you that to properly supervise the number of persons that he would have to supervise took courage. It was not easy. But Derek, through tact and tenacity, made it look exceptionally easy. Derek served primarily as supervisor of the canine unit. As that supervisor, he had the challenging task of ensuring that the man of the Barbados Prison Service was fulfilled. Thus, he ensured that those officers under his span of control were trained and knew what was expected of them whenever they were on duty. Derek always led by example. He would never ask an officer to do a task that he himself was not willing to perform. He believed in inclusivity. He never thought that he knew everything or that all of the ideas resided within him as an individual. He sought input from his team, thus building team morale and allowing, the team, and allowing each team member to know that their contribution was valued. The role of the Kena unit is an extremely important and requires individuals who are committed to achieving positive results. Derek also did some special security details at some point, including the search for one Winston Leroy Hall. During this search, Derek had occasion to sleep in Cane Fields all hours of the night. Unfortunately, that was without success. Derek continued to rise through the ranks of the Barbados Prison Service, being able to act in a management capacity that is as an orderly officer from time to time. He was given the gift of time, and he used that gift to touch as many lives and right as many wrongs as the years would allow. We can still see in our minds his steely gaze and resolve and hear his calm, reassuring voice whenever called upon, irrespective of the task. Derek was a well-trained officer and used his training to great effect. He was always punctual and possessed an exemplary attendance record. Speaking to Miss Lena Weeks, one of his many colleagues, she said this of Derek. He did his many duties with pride, dignity, and selflessness. He was fearless, yet fair. On a daily basis, he marshaled his team to provide a continuous standard of service in the areas of security in and out of the facility. Quality customer service for visitors, contractors, and other professionals conducting business with the Barbados Prison Service. Derek truly so showcased what the Barbados Prison Service stands for. He was a product of an age when the joy and nobility of work prevented individuals from becoming barriers to cooperation and mutual respect. A time when adversaries still saw each other as comrades. And that's how Derek Morris became one of the best officers of our time. He did it by sticking to principle 
and never seeking to compromise standards to accommodate mediocrity. He always sought to bring others up to the required standard. All in all, Derek spent 28 productive years of dedicated service to the Barbados Prison Service and indeed to his beloved country. For this meritorious service, he received a Medal of Honor from the government of Barbados. He was also accorded Prison Officer of the Year for the year 2016. We cannot know for certain how long we have here. We cannot foresee the future or trials or misfortunes that will test us along the way. We cannot know God's plan for our lives. What we can do is to live our lives as best as we can with purpose, love, and dignity. We can use each day as Derek did to show those who are closest to us how much we care about them and treat others with the kindness and respect that we wish for ourselves. We can learn from our mistakes and grow from our failures. And we can strive at all costs to make a difference so that someday, if we are blessed with the chance to look back on our time, we can know that we spent it well, that our fleeting presence had a lasting impact on the lives of other human beings. This is how Derek lived. This is and was his legacy. Derek served his country well. He wore his uniform with pride. All that is left for me to say is, Derek, you can now go off duty. All is safe and secure, and the tally is correct. I thank you. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we remember before you today your servant, Derek. We pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the hymn, How Great Thou Art.
please be seated. Our first lesson, written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 18, will be read by Simone Gill. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. I am not Simone Gill, but indeed Lena Weeks, a representative of the Barbados Prison Service. And on behalf of my dear friend, she would like you to know that this was Derek's favorite scripture. And he wanted to leave these words of comfort from our Lord and Savior with us today. The coming of the Lord. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the next hymn. Great is thy faithfulness.
Please be seated. Our second lesson, written in John 11, 21 to 27, to be read by Terry Small. John 11, from verses 21 to 27, reading from the King James Version. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall live again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, and believeth for me shall never die. Believeth thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. Here endeth the word of God. We will now stand for the hymn that precedes the sermon, Angel Voices Ever Singing.
he die, yet shall he live. Kindly be seated. Part of the 25th verse of the 11th chapter, the Gospel according to St. John, the one that was just read so eloquently. Though he die, yet shall he live. May I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before question, these words of our Lord are unsurpassed in the comfort, assurance, and strength they bring to all who hear them in faith. And to know that the ache and the emptiness which death brings have been met and conquered by one who is equal to the task is the best news we can ever receive. And if we now know what it means to listen for a footstep that never comes, to long for a voice that is no more heard, then you can cherish all the more these words of our Lord Jesus Christ which is so majestic and unfathomable. Each time we recite the words, the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. These words somewhat spans all eternity in its meaning. Today is a good day to see that conviction in the light of the words Jesus spoke. And here is the central thought of the sermon to guide us. God's faithfulness in raising Jesus Christ from the dead is the basis on which we hope for life after death. We all know that the occasion on which Christ spoke these words provides for us the necessary background and the necessary understanding of their fuller meaning. We will recall that in the town of Bethany, a few miles just away from Jerusalem, lived two sisters and a brother who opened their doors on their hearts as well to Jesus on many occasions. The man of the household, Lazarus, had died. And his two sisters, Mary and Martha, sent word to Jesus of his death. The news somewhat affected Jesus terribly. The word of Lazarus' death, the sound of the women weeping, and the knowledge of Lazarus' departure caused Jesus to weep openly. The simple phrase in John chapter 2, Jesus wept, is a powerful reminder to us of how completely our Lord shared our human nature. And incidentally, since he had no hesitancy whatsoever in expressing his deeply felt emotions in this time of grief, we need not hold back on our own individual tears. When Martha learned that Jesus was coming near their household in Bethany, she could not restrain herself. Hurrying to the door to meet him, she shows the strength of mind and faith in her earnest words 
addressed to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give it to you. Jesus knew exactly what Martha meant. And it's most likely then that Martha herself did not know exactly what she meant. Because the hour of bereavement is an hour when we do not know what to think or how to express ourselves to God or even man. We are numb, bleak, and chill in the face of death. And Jesus knew it all. He did not call Martha because her thoughts were blurred and sad. He said, your brother will rise again. And I'm certain that he's saying the same thing to our brother Derek here this afternoon. He's saying the same thing to all of us present here who are mourning the death and loss of our brother. Your brother will rise again. You see, my friends, the attention is upon Christ and not Lazarus. It is of importance then that we recognize the fact that Jesus said nothing more, nothing less about Lazarus as he spoke to Martha. This was enough for Martha to know that the Lord himself gave his word that Lazarus would rise. But when it comes to the question by whose power such a thing should happen, Jesus reveals the working of God the Father in his own life. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. There's a very deliberate placement of emphasis here. One which may escape our notice if we do not take care in heeding the message. Jesus draws the attention away from any questions about the everlastingness of life. The immortality of the soul. He does not deliver well-tuned phrases about the qualities of the human personality that are so powerful and unique that they cannot die and but survive. The attention is not upon humans, not even his very close friend, Lazarus. The Bible do not speak at all of the immortal qualities of man. The attention is upon the life-giving power of God. I am the resurrection and the life. The words, I am the resurrection and the life, upon Jesus' lips means not only that he has given the power to rise again from death to life. It means that in his own victory over death, Jesus was able to display God's faithfulness in promising resurrection and life to all who accept his gracious work of rescuing the whole world from eternal death. Everything, my friends, hinges on God's work in Jesus Christ. According to this word, Christ's own resurrection is the key to our present hope and our future conviction. The God and Sovereign Lord whom Jesus reveals is God of the living and not God and not that of the dead. It is God's quality, not man's, 
which guarantees the life of the world to come. And this is the stumbling block over which unbelief strips the belief and falls. It does mean absurd that everything in this life, yes, and whatever life to come is determined by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is the truth. That is the gospel. That is the same truth that makes us in every other facet of the whole truth of God. It is a natural thing, my friends, to fear death. We know nothing of what lies on the other side of death. And so the reality of death is one we face with shiver. All the sweet poems and lovely lyrics about the memories of loved ones withstanding this unmistakable horror loneliness and deep sadness that grips us in the face of death and the psalmist puts his finger on the heart of it in Psalms 103 and verses 15 to 16 as for man his days are like grass he flourishes like a flower of the field for the wind passes over it and it is gone and its place knows it no more. In our day and in our culture when so many remarkable gifts of God are at the hand to enrich and prolong our lives we may find it harder and harder to come to terms with death. But do not misunderstand me. I do not pass judgment on the oxygen machines and the heart resuscitators and the other medical means of extending the life of one. But where the judgment does fall upon is when we put such gifts of God in the place of God and think that somehow or other we are not going to have to face the fact of death. The Christian faith, my friends, is based upon the truth that God has overcome death. Yes, for we worship a resurrected Lord. And we join together with the whole company of the faithful, both on earth and in heaven, and praising God for his victory over death and raising his son. Each time we offer prayer, each time we sing a hymn, or simply direct our minds to the living God and his mercies, we are directing our worship to him who is the resurrection and the life. This is what the Christian rejoices in and hope for. Christ's own work of conquering death. Yes, he will not abandon us in our hour of greatest need. The very reason why he endured the full horror of death and was raised victorious over it was in order to disclose God's faithfulness to all. You and I, including our brother Derek, put your hope in him. We do not need other human props or detours. We need to look to Jesus Christ, my friends. He is with us in death as well as life. My friends, when death parts us from those we love, we must have the assurance that only God can give, that he keeps faith with us and with all who sleep. Have you ever thought of this? 
that the finest tribute you can pay to the risen Lord is to entrust your loved ones to his unfailing care? To whom else would we want to entrust our loved ones? To whom else would we ourselves go in our last hour? We can honor our God, our Lord, in no finer way than by leaving our loved ones with him and in his care. He brings healing for our heartaches with the assurances. And he expresses it in the text. He that believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. The blessed dead enjoy the peaceful rest that Jesus Christ provides for all of us. They await his call to resurrection and eternal life in the glorious body that he will recreate when he comes in glory at the end of time. We must all remember then, my friends, that we have this hope because the Son of God has certified it by his own resurrection. We have it through grace. And this hope is a gift, his gift for us. Our eternal future then is not decided because of our heredity or our environment, our eternal future is determined by God's mighty deeds of love accomplished on our behalf. And so we take to heart the great meaning of the words, I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. We can say this from our hearts because of him who is the resurrection and the life. God's faithfulness in raising Jesus Christ from the dead is the one basis on which our hope for resurrection and eternal life totally rests. In closing, I leave these comforting words his colleagues, friends, family, and all those in my hearing. Words from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 3 to 4. Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. What comforting words to keep in your hearts and your minds on an occasion like this and time. My friends, take heart. God is in full control. And until we release and allow him to work in our hearts and minds, we will not be the same. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Our brother Derek, dead physically, but will live spiritually. May he rest in peace. Amen. Let me take this opportunity to extend my deepest condolences to the family and friends of our brother Derek. I'm very close to this family, actually. I buried his dad, I buried his mother, I buried his brother. Huh? His grandmother, sorry, his grandmother, yes. yes. 
no, no, his grandmother. Yes, my apologies. You know, in the heat of the moment, the words just keep flowing, right? But my friends, life is a journey. And on it, many things will happen. I want also to extend condolences on behalf of the Honorable Minister Colin Jordan, who's here in our presence. Welcome. And to the superintendent of the prison and all the officers and staff who are here present, and other dignitaries who I cannot see or recognize, is, I extend condolences on your behalf. May God continue to bless you and keep you. And may he comfort you at this time as you mourn the loss of your loved one. Though he die, yet shall he live. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. It can be found in your booklet on page 6. I believe in God. Please remain standing for the prayers to be done by Pastor Aquinda Harris. <clears throat> Bless the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of all gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Father, we come to you giving you thanks and giving you praise for you, O oh God, know from the beginning the times of suffering of all peoples. <clears throat> we thank you, God, because our sufferings can be borne by you. Your word said to everything there is a season and through life's changing scenes, you, our God, remain the source in every season. I lift to you all our family members who are grieving at this moment. <clears throat> God, you see the tears. We know that you, Lord, were moved with compassion and you wept. We who now weep are assured that tears are a language you understand. So now, God, we ask you to dispel every doubt. Remove all anxiety. Take away feelings of distress and feelings of discouragement. Lord God, soothe our sorrow. Heal the many wounds and drive away all of our fears. We ask you, God, to surround us with your divine presence and cover us under your blood. How much, God, we thank you 
that Derek gave his life to you when he realized that you were the ultimate one and that you would take good care of everything. Lord God, we thank you. We praise you. We find that to be such comfort at this hour. God, we thank you that his life would have helped someone, something. He would have encouraged someone. He would have shown love and compassion and kindness. And we pray that these seeds that were sown by him would blossom forth into hearts that will turn to God. And that a harvest of souls for the kingdom of God will come forth out of his life. We thank you for giving him the opportunity to turn to you. And we know with you all things are possible. And we believe you, Lord, yet again. For all others, God, who need you at this hour, be it friends, be it acquaintances, be it colleagues, we ask you today to pass by and touch their heart. We ask you, God, to do only what you can do, Lord God. And that is to turn things around, touch lives. And cause change for your honor and for your glory. We acknowledge you are an awesome God. Because we have seen you at work in times of past grief and sorrow. And we ask you God to take good care of all of us yet again. And all that you have done before. In times of sorrow and despair. We ask you, God, do it again. And he asks all these things in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Our family thanks you for your show of support and your love. God bless you. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done, and the good we have failed to do. And strengthen us to follow in the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us commend our brother, Derek Livingston, to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Derek Livingston to your merciful keeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, in glory forever. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. As we leave the building, we sing the hymn, And Can It Be?
We're out. Yay! <laughs>
Let us pray. Man, born of a woman, has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Derek Livingston, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your day love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother Derek Livingston and we yourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity. We give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Unto God's most gracious mercy and protection we commit him. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon him and give him his peace, now and forevermore. Amen.
To him, to God be the glory. Shady Green Pastures. And Shady Green Pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads their children along. Where the water pool flow fed the very one feet, God leads their children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire. 
let us pray. O oh Lord, support us all the day along this troublous life. Until the shades lengthen and the evening comes. The fever of life is over and our work is ended. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant unto your servant Derek a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace and continue to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.